Hello friends, welcome to the part 2 of crude operations in AngularJS. Now, in the part 1, we have created a simple project and we have implemented AngularJS app to render a simple page. Now, in this part, we are going to implement server side controller, model, and entity frameworks code first approach. So, let's start with that. And you can see we have already created a sim simple app, AngularJS app. So, if you view in browser this page, You'll see this app being created now we are going to do a server side coding here so to start with let me add one model class so as we have discussed earlier the player is going to be our entity so let me add player.cs class and inside this player class I'm going to have few properties which will be the properties of player and we'll be having same number of columns in the database as well so the first property would be player id which will be identity and primary key of the table then we are going to have the name of the player then we are going to have three more properties the club for which the player plays the nationality of the player and the age of the player so this these properties constitute our model and we are going to refer this model namespace and the controller so let's add one controller as well so we are going to add mvc5 controller which is empty controller and we are going to refer this namespace here now we are going to add context class as well so you can see in order to use the code first approach we need to have entity framework being installed in our application so I have entity framework being installed in my application so if you want to check so go to tools go to library package manager go to manage NuGet packages for solution so click on this Microsoft and .NET so it will retrieve information you can see entity framework at the top if you have tick mark so that means it is installed and if you have those DLLs just shown by me if you don't have you can install it from here so you can see in the references these two DLLs are present so that means entity framework is installed in my app and it can be used so now as we are going to use code for suppose we need to have our own context class which will be inheriting from DB context so let me add my context class and we are going to name this context class as crude context uh, in order to use entity framework functionality I need to refer system.data.entity and I will inherit my class from db context class and inside this class I'm going to have a public property of type db set of my model the model which we have created that is player and we are going to name our property as players and we will have getters and setter now our context class is also ready for use so when the code first approach now you will be having one question in your mind that we have not setting any config key so how the things will happen how the database will be created by code first approach so let me explain you a few things about the code first approach so the course code first approach will create a database named crude demo dot models dot crude context by itself without connection string and it will have a players table inside the database which will be maintaining the data of the player and that database will be created inside the app dot data folder so the mdf file will be present here we'll see that in the coming time now our context class is also ready now we go to the player controller and now we'll be creating various crude functions which will be responsible for performing crude operations so first let me add a private variable of our context class so that we can use context object to do our work and I'm going to name it as the score context and I'm going to declare it to null and I'm going to have one public constructor 
and inside this constructor I'm going to initialize my context yeah. and then I can use this context object in my entire controller now the first method we are going to do is get players so this this function will get all the players from the DB so I'll be having a list of my list of type our context and we name this list variable as list players and we'll say context dot players db set dot to list so this will get all the players from the database and we are going to return a JSON and we are going to say new list equal to list players okay and this will be a get operation so we will say json request behavior dot allow get now this is the function this is the first function similarly we'll have another function which will be get player by id so on editing a record we need to fetch a player based on its id so this function will receive one id as well and based on that id we are going to have a where condition here which will use lambda expression to compare the ids and to fetch the single record so we are sure there will be a single record and we'll have it a single player so we'll remove the list and we'll be passing the single player itself so this this will also be a get operation so we will set json request behavior dot allow get now the third function we are going to do is now we are done with the get and get player by id now let's move to add player so this function will receive object of type player and inside this function we are going to add it to context saying context dot players dot add and we will pass the object we have received from the request and then we'll call save changes function of our context which will add the record to the database and then finally we are going to return a JSON and we'll name the property as status saying player added successfully similarly we'll be having method for update as well so the update method will also receive the player object through model binding and through request and instead of adding what we are going to do is now this player object is not tracked by entity framework because this is sent by the angular app so we have to attach or we have to modify its state so in order to do that we say context dot entry which entry that is player dot state is equal to system dot entity state dot modified so basically we are modifying the state of this object and we are telling the entity framework that this object has been changed and on calling the context dot save changes this this player or this player will be saved or updated in the database and here we can say player updated successfully now we are done with the getters add update and the final function we have is the delete so so we'll be having the same structure and instead of player object we'll be having only the id which will be the player id so in order to delete a player we need to first fetch the player based on the player id so let me copy this query so we are going to first fetch the player and then we'll say context dot player db set dot remove and we have to pass that object after removing it we'll say context dot 
we will call save changes function which will remove it from the database and finally we will send the status back saying player deleted successfully all right so we are done with the functions which will be responsible for performing crude operations now we are done with the work for this video for this part in the next part we are going to create factory functions in the angular.js which will be calling these functions to perform the operations and those factory functions will be in turn called by angular.js controllers so we are done with the part 2 that is implementing server side controller model and entity frameworks code first approach so thank you for watching and please do watch other parts as well